hour, uh, Congress has oil executives in the hot seat. They're talking about runaway gasoline prices, wanting to know the reasons for that. They're also talking alternative energies. And you know, some of the biggest names uh, in business, in venture capital, are banking on ethanol as at least part of the solution to our energy problems. But some suggest there is this uh, much buzzed about cover is story about it from Time Magazine this week that says that the promise of ethanol is a big myth. Something we want to talk about right now with Bob Deneen, who's president of the Renewable Fuels Association, and Jerry Taylor, who's senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Dennis is with me on this as well. And gentlemen, the, the, the one paragraph that stands out for me, and admittedly this is a not what you'd call a balanced article. It was more of a, 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 a uh, one to try and convince everybody uh, uh, otherwise about the uh, eco-friendliness of ethanol. It says several new studies show the biofuel boom is doing exactly the opposite of what its proponents intended. It is dramatically accelerating global warming, imperiling the planet in the name of saving it. What do you think of that, Jerry? Well, it's absolutely correct. That uh, cover story from Time was launched essentially by a study that was published in Science Magazine in late February. What the authors of that uh, piece did is they looked at the existing work that had been done on climate change and ethanol. And what they found was that the old studies all assumed that the sequestration involved in, uh, in corn yields was about the same as the sequestration associated with pasture land and forest land and that there wouldn't be any net change if we expand ethanol production. But they found that wasn't true at all. So what they did is they took the old computer models that we had been using to calculate greenhouse gas emissions from ethanol but made one change. They changed the amount of sequestration that follows from planting corn and it turns out from that study okay. that uh, greenhouse gas emissions from ethanol will be about double that of gasoline over the next 30 years. Bob, in our, our quest to uh, try and be more eco-friendly and wean ourselves of oil, have we overdone it to the point where we're ignoring some of the, uh, the problems with uh, ethanol? No, not at all. The fact of the matter is ethanol, as we produce it in this country today, is absolutely reducing greenhouse gases. The same models demonstrated that last year we reduced carbon, uh, or carbon emissions some 10 million tons, or the equivalent of taking 1.2 million vehicles completely off the road. The science article that you referenced uh, had a number of assumptions that were just simply not factually based. It, it assumed 30 billion gallons of ethanol would be produced when the law that was passed last year actually limits ethanol production to 15 billion gallons. It did not properly account for the co-product credits. Right. It assumed that for every acre of, of corn uh, grown in this country that ultimately goes to biofuels, you've got to take an acre out of production or into production out of the rainforest. Well, you wouldn't produce biofuels in that fashion. We ought not be destroying the rainforest or, or going into any sensitive okay. lands in order to promote biofuels, but, but that was the assumptions that were made. Now, you teed okay. up the Time article, if I may just quickly, you teed up the Time article appropriately. It was an editorial piece. There was no balance in that. Had the authors tried to have any kind of balance, they would have shown that there are a number of highly critical uh, critiques of the science article. Okay, Bob, we'd love to have a conversation about this, though, rather than just the one side of things. Yeah, right. hey, hey, Bob, there's, I mean, our government has spent billions of dollars, billions and billions over the years, subsidizing the ethanol industry. Have we made the wrong bet on corn? Isn't there something obscene about burning up food that could be feeding the world to provide fuel for your car? I mean, Brazil does sugar cane, so at least you have fewer sweets. And switchgrass, I hear guys talking about. Why corn? Have we made a, a big error in the U.S.? We haven't made an error at all. In fact, uh, it has been a sound investment. The grain-derived ethanol industry today is the foundation upon which we are going to build a bigger, better industry using other feedstocks. But you have to have that foundation today. And by the way, we are revitalizing rural America as a result of that investment. And it makes a heck of a lot more sense to be investing in domestic renewable fuels <coughs> like ethanol than continue to pour money into Petroleum, right? Okay. And that's why we, we are in a huge mess today because of the investments that we made in petroleum. Rural America. Wow, wheat prices are up 120 percent in a year. I don't. I think rural America is doing really well. Hey, Jerry, let me ask you something here. Um, there's a billion people across Southeast Asia who will triple per capita income, hit the middle class in the next seven years. They're going to want to drive cars. We've got 700 million cars on the world right now. 
say we add another 200, 300 million, is ethanol going to be enough to fuel those gas tanks? Well, that remains to be seen, but I can tell you that ethanol is increasing fuel prices, not reducing them. Last well, that's week not on wholesale, at all. Last week on wholesale spot markets, E85, uh, E85 or excuse me, 87 octane gasoline was selling for about 260 a gallon. E100, 100% ethanol was selling for about 380 a gallon after you but adjust for energy content. But as we achieve economies of scale, excuse me, let me finish, Bob. Hey, Bob. You've had a lot of time. Okay. The point here is that ethanol uh, that is at me, least a dollar twenty more expensive than conventional gasoline. And I want to get to a point Bob made a moment ago about uh, yields abroad. It turns out that when corn prices go up, it may not lead to rainforest destruction in the United States or ecosystem destruction in the United States, but what it does is it increases the incentive for farmers in other countries to plant corn and plant other crops. Right. And that's what drives the greenhouse gas emissions, the study in science. I've never been shut up by a gas. No, yeah, didn't I mean to do that. that. We've that lost was, control. That was me, Jerry. That wasn't Bob. It was All right, my there, apologies. But, uh, that's you. okay. Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you both. Very Thank stimulating. You. It was something. <laughs> Read Time Magazine. See what you think.